Hello everyone, my name is Jake Hayfley, and today I'd like to show off my 2020 Christmas project. Going forward, I hope to write a script and edit my videos a little more to help give a better idea of the actual process of making these projects. And while I didn't record different parts of making this project, I'm going to try and aim to do that in the future just so I can edit those clips in between me talking. So let's talk about the actual project I made. In general, this is a PCB that I personally designed and soldered that used a counter and a clock to make different LEDs flash to show off an Iowa State logo. The red LEDs are always on, and by using transistors and yellow LEDs, I made it so they could turn on and off around the red ones. Through my digital logic class, I took in the fall, and I learned how to use a counter and apply it to these transistors. The first thing I started doing was designing the schematic in Altium, a PCB design software, and prototyping the circuit on a breadboard with Arduino. This helped me feel much more confident using transistors. I used NPN transistors and when turned on, they'd connect the ground line of the yellow LEDs so a circuit would be made with the resistor and 5 volt plan above. Each number on the modulo 10 counter was connected to one of these transistors, so when the clock went from low to high, the next transistor could turn on and the previous one would turn off. I tried to apply more low-level logic and do more stuff by hand this time around, unlike my previous projects where Arduino lends a hand in many spots. I found an oscillator online with an equation to help delay the timing of the pulse so I wouldn't accidentally give anyone a seizure. This led me to a circuit that used two capacitors and a resistor to delay the pulse. Overall, I am happy with how the timing of the clock turned out. The wiring of the counter was super straightforward, I just had to pay close attention to the data sheet for which of the other pins to keep high and low so the counter would act as normal. I also used a DDC barrel jack and fuse to get 5 volts of power. I then wired a switch to the barrel jack so you could use the turn the board on and off without plugging it. This was super easy to do and way more accessible doing it on a PCB than a breadboard, which I said a lot during this project. With that done, the schematic was mostly finished, so I moved on to designing the actual PCB. I wanted the physical board to be compact but easy to solder. Since I had so many parts to solder because of the LEDs, and since I was still mostly new to surface mount soldering, I didn't want to shoot my own foot here. I constantly checked the distance between the closest parts to make sure it was possible, and it turned out alright. I used the alignment tools in Altium to make sure the LEDs were all straight and I really liked the final board because of this. Without this tool, this project wouldn't have been possible. I put the transistor surrounding the eye while still trying to keep it condensed. Then I put the counter and the clock to the right side of the board near the barrel jack and switch, since these were the first parts that would go through my circuit. This worked very well with my final 3D design and I'm happy that I kept these parts together. I put a 5 volt plane on the top layer and a ground plane on the bottom of a PCB. If I ever needed to connect the ground to anything, I would just use a small hole or a via to route it through to the bottom layer and connect it to the ground. After the PCB was finished, I waited for the parts to ship and started on the 3D printing design. I used two separate parts and some plexiglass to act as a screen for the LEDs. The bottom box had screw holes to mount the PCB to the box so it was sturdy, and a part to hang it on the wall if I wanted. I used a smaller piece with screw holes that would hold the plexiglass in place after I scored and fitted it for the parts. The print themselves were straightforward after a few test prints to make sure the dimensions of the PCB were good. At this point, I felt like I was getting way more confident with the CAD design and using my Ender 3 printer with Autodesk Fusion 360. After the prints were done, all that was left to solder was the actual board. After putting on all the parts, I used a multimeter to test the counter and clock. Around the edge of the board, I placed these test joints which would tell me the different parts of the counter were on or off. This was useful because it helped me learn if my circuit was having an issue with power, the counter, or the parts that weren't being soldered on correctly. Overall, I was happy with how bright the LEDs were and how it turned out. This project was partly inspired by those neon lights that people put in their basements for bars of sports teams. Using a PCB was very helpful this project, and I'm going to keep applying it to my future projects, since it is much sturdier than breadboards. Thank you for watching my video, and if you're interested in anything else I do, go watch some of my other videos on my channel, or check out my website that I have in the description. See you in the next video.